Hello, and welcome to the video introducing reaction types. Now the reason we have to mess with reaction types is because so often we are given a problem in which we're given the reactants, but nothing about the products. And yet the question asks about the products, so we have to come up with those ourselves. Now with those we could memorize every possible reaction that there is out there. Oh goodness, that's not going to happen. Or we could figure out what there are, what trends there exist among the reactions, and do they fall in some kind of categorization scheme? And yes, indeed they do. And fortunately, considering how much chemistry there is going on out there at all times, luckily there's only a few reaction types that we really have to learn. And here they are. We have combustion reaction, and for those we have some sort of fuel and oxygen involved. And that fuel is often, but not always, has C's and H's or C's and H's and O's for that fuel. Reacts with oxygen and then can have either complete combustion or incomplete. Complete combustion has enough oxygen around to make a CO2. If there's not enough oxygen around, that's a dangerous situation because if you just get the very toxic, poisonous carbon monoxide. All right, so then we also have combination where we have multiple reactants forming a single product. And please note, you don't have to just have two reactants. It could be more than two as well. You just got to have more than one reactant making one single product. The opposite of that then is, mm, is the decomposition down here where we have a single reactant making multiple products, okay? And notice that those products are neutral. Why do I say that? Because a lot of students get them confused with dissociation, where again, we have a single reactant, multiple products, but here we have ions. Dissociation is where a single compound dissociates, breaks up into its component ions. That's a little bit different because of the existence of the ions. Then we also have displacement here, and displacement, I think of this A and B as a couple dancing. It's a, a cation and an anion, and this C comes in and takes the place, and so we've got a different couple at the end. Oh, drats. Then with metathesis, this is where we have trading of two partners. So we have two couples dancing, and these two couples, they trade partners. Um, and so we go A with Oh, let's see, we've got to go A with D. And with chemistry, opposites attract. We're talking ions here. So it's AD with BC, no, CB, and it does matter which order we write it in. Then we have some others. The neutralization, that's the acid and base, gives salt and water. The precipitation, where we have at least one solid product. And then we have oxidation reduction, uh, which is called redox, and well, we'll learn a lot more about those, but it has to do with change in oxidation state. Very important for electrochemistry. And honestly, aging as well. All right, so let's look at our first example here. We have something with C's, H's, and O's, plus an O2, so I know that it's combustion. Now I look at the product and I see CO2, so I know that it's complete combustion. Great! We've got our first one down. Now we look at our next one. We've got H two HGOs. Now this two out in front, ignore that. For looking at reaction type, we have one single substance, so a single reactant type, and then we've got multiple products. Now I want to say, are those ions? No, they're not ions, so I know that this is decomposition. All right, let's look at the next one. I've got AgNO3. Oh, I remember NO3 is a polyatomic ion, so I know that's an anion. NaCl, and look at that. Cl is dancing with someone else on the other side. All right, so this is two couples dancing as our reactants and they change partners, so this is double displacement. Awesome. 